All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Matt Seaman, the Executive Director of the Consortium for Service Innovation, and really excited for the discussion today with uh, Kyle Shannon, the CEO of Storyvine, and Kevin Clark from the President of Content Evolution. And for those of us that were at Member Summit last year, the Consortium's Member Summit last year, you probably remember Kevin, he did a great talk on unleashing the power of presence and sense mapping which spawned quite a bit of discussion amongst the membership about thinking about how are we actually gonna continue to be designing things for the human element, which I think gets more and more important <laughs> in this age of AI. Uh, and it's been a lot of discussion over the last year on, on AI and the intersection of AI and empathy, coaching the human element, and as we're starting to see member companies implementing AI in creating knowledge, mining knowledge databases, <clears throat> thinking about all of the different ways we can leverage these machines to create knowledge, the human element is becoming more and more important. And as we move forward, we think one of the big business def differentiators, especially in services and dealing with people, is going to be the connection that we make with people and how can we leverage AI in a way that actually brings us closer to our customers, closer to our employees. I had the privilege of joining one of the Content Evolution New World calls, oh, maybe a month ago? Is it a month ago, Kevin? Maybe a little bit, something, oh, something a little like bit that. over a month ago, but yeah, yeah, it's about right. Yeah. And uh, saw a demo that and a discussion that Kevin and Kyle had on kind of this intersection of storytelling and AI and some of the amazing things that are being done and its application in support services, getting knowledge in front of people, training people to me was shocking. And I thought it would be exciting to have that discussion replay out here for consortium members and people in the consortium community. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Kevin and let Kevin do some more introductions and setting up context. All right, fantastic. Matt, again, thanks for joining that call and for in inviting us to be with you today. I'm gonna run this just like a Content Evolution New World session because you said, hey, can you just do that again? And we said, yes, we can do that again, right? And so we, that's exactly what we're going to do. For those of you that I saw, all right, at your uh, in-person meeting, it's great to have you with us today. And for those of you that I don't know, glad to meet you virtually. So uh, what Kyle is, is bringing to you is an extension of his core business, Storyvine. But Kyle is also the chief generative officer for Content Evolution. So we have a group called CE uh, CoLab, and we've been working in using and harnessing generative AI for our federation membership for a year now. And so there's, there's some interesting things that are happening, but Kyle has his own community of people who are learning about AI in a couple of different forums. So. I think, Kyle, you are the very first chief generative officer on the planet because we invented the title <laughs> and I don't think anybody else holds it. So uh, you are a singular talent on the planet. And I'll just mention uh, that um, Kyle was the founder of the very first online advertising agency when the internet was a new thing, all right? And we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the internet this year. So Kyle is a serial pioneer in his <laughs> field. And uh, now that I've taken all of, you know, that I've set expe expectations so high, Kyle, all right, yeah. good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and where do I go from here? I'm going to uh, turn it over to you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. No, I'm excited. Um, when So we were doing some fun stuff with AI and content evolution, and Kevin goes, Hey, I'm thinking about, you know, I think you should have a title. And he goes, how about chief generative officer? I'm like, that sounds cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, Cause I think everyone's going to have a chief AI officer. Um, sure, but, sure. but anyway, um, so one of the things I'll talk to you about, I'll talk a little bit about Storyvine and, and what we do, but one of my, one of the through lines um, 
I guess in my professional career is I, I hate the gratuitous use of technology. And I think you always have to do it for a purpose. And so it took me a, a while um, in thinking about what generative AI made possible to figure out how do you incorporate that into whatever you do in a way that's not just, oh, we've got AI too. I think it's gonna be really easy for people to do that. And I think we're about to enter an era where everyone's got some sort of AI content generation tool. So we're gonna be competing against just, you know, just, just, just a, just a, just a dumpster fire <laughs> of, of new products and new capabilities. And everyone's gonna say theirs is the shiniest. And so what I looked at was Storyvine. So, so I'll show you a little bit about how it works, but Storyvine is an automated video storytelling platform. If you wanna tell video stories well with human beings at scale, that's what it does. And it does it really well. We've been doing it for 12 years. We do it in healthcare and pharma. We do it with some of the biggest pharma you know, companies in the world and, and get through their regulations and all their approval process and things like that. Um, and if I look forward, as AI tools prol proliferate, a core part of Storyvine's value proposition, the automation, the value of that that's high right now drops to zero, right? Because in the next year, everything's going to be automated. And then I look at the other part of what we do, which is authentic storytelling. And I say, ooh, in a world of infinite content generation, authenticity feels like it goes up in value. In fact, the Merriam-Webster word of the year for 2023 was authenticity. It was the most searched word for 2023. Ooh. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. I was like, ah, there's something there. What's going on here, right? So I think there's this instinct of, wait, we're going to get overrun with this content. We're already overrun with this content, right? With automation and AI has been mm -hmm. around for, for decades, right? So, um, so how do I take that core that I feel like the value is going to go up and how do I amplify that? And so that's, so what I'm going to show you is not just some slick AI tools, but I, I am going to show you some slick AI tools that I'm really proud of and really excited about. But, but I, you know, I'd invite you to sort of think of them in the context of how can you use AI as an extension of your core value propositions that remains valuable as we move into all these changes. I might mention that, um, Kyle's preceding entity was called Invention Asylum, right? <laughs> and he continues to move things along, right? And adapt and pivot on a fairly regular basis based on what he sees as, as available. I've been advising him for over a decade and uh, th this fellow knows how to uh, adapt. No, for thank sure. you. I appreciate that. Okay. So Storyvine, um, we position it as a video agility platform. So basically the idea that, you know, if you could create high quality content mm -hmm. anywhere, anytime from anyone, if, if video production weren't the primary bottleneck and you could just tell stories, what might be possible? That's, that's what we do. Um, how we do it is best understood if you think about how you produce video in today's world. To produce video in today's world, you kind of have these two major lanes. You've got professional video, you've got user-generated video. They both have very compelling strengths, but it's almost like they're opposite sides of a coin. You can kind of have one or the other, right? You can take a centralized, you know, highly structured approach, or you can take this distributed, immediate, super authentic approach. Storyvine's a hybrid that lives in the space between those two worlds, and it doesn't really replace either. It's kind of a new kind of form that that has the authenticity and scalability and immediacy of user generated video, but it has the, the structure and, and, you know, just high quality, you know, aspects of professional video. How we do what we do is we um, break a story down ahead of time. So rather than filming two hours of content and then trying to find the story within it, we say, well, in the ideal video, what would the person be saying? And we we break that down into a series of prompts. And then the Storyvine app serves as a virtual director. So it mm -hmm. literally guides someone step by step through the process. You know, putting your head in the dotted outline, don't put it in that other area. Um, take a picture for the video, introduce yourself, um, talk about what led you to reach out to your doctor, 
you know, how did it feel when you were diagnosed? So we're literally walking someone step by step through the storytelling process. Those raw clips then get uploaded into the Storyvine system where there's sitting essentially uh, a pre-approved, fully edited video shell sitting in the cloud. So somebody answers questions in the app, it goes up into the cloud and five minutes later, you've got a fully edited video complete with graphics and things like that. Surprisingly, um, we're not using AI to do that automation. You know, in the in you know early years, people would say, "Oh, you must be using a lot of AI for that." And I'm like, "No, it's actually we're using more Aristotle than AI. We're basically <laughs> a structured storytelling, the modular approach to capturing content, and then we just assemble them in the cloud." Um, so that's that. And then there's a backend system where you can manage all that content, you know, approve it, things like that. And then once uh, the video has been produced. In the case of pharma, they call it promotional, but that's also marketing. So you can, you know, share marketing videos out with the world. You can do internal communications like thought leadership or employee engagement. Uh, we've even seen uh, sales organizations using Storyvine for, uh, you know, doing personalized videos to doctors, for example. So it's a very, very flexible platform. And for 12 years, this has been Storyvine, right? You, you figure out the kinds of stories you want to tell. You engage with us. We'll work together to figure out that story framework. We'll work together to figure out the look and feel. You, you go out, have your people share their stories, and you've got a database full of raw assets as well as videos. But as I started looking at AI and what it makes possible, and as I started looking at one of the things that we didn't have for well, heck, Kevin, you and I talked. You and I talked about this for years. That we thought, yeah, that's right. It would always be good to have in the Storyvine system a transcript of what the person said. But transcription software sucked <laughs> for years. Mm -hmm. It was just bad. And all of a sudden, kind of overnight, um, OpenAI's Whisper comes out, and some transcription tools came along that all of a sudden made these transcriptions really good. It's like, ah, that's interesting. So the first thing we did was, was the incorporated transcriptions. But then I thought, how can we take this narrative core and expand it? So rather than just creating a content engine that just spews out a bunch of content based on a topic, why not start, start with the authentic narrative as the core? So what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to flip over. This is This is a live site. So this is a tool that we've created um, called the Authenticity Engine. Th this is something I've been thinking about for a year and we've built over the past two months. And the basic idea is start with the, the authentic core. So let me go grab a video here. Mm -hmm. And so as the video plays to the left, you'll notice to the right, it says our gnomes are hard at work. And there's that little animation there. So what we just kicked off by uploading this video is, is a cascading series of events are about to happen. The first thing that we're doing is we're creating a transcript of the video. So within a few seconds of the video being uploaded, here's what the person said. Here's the time code of you know when they said it. And that now allows us, we now, we now understand most of what we need to understand about this video, and we can start to do some other things. So you notice down here underneath the video, there's now a title of the video, there's a description of the video, and we've pulled out key messages from the video. You'll notice on the right, there's chapters. So, so we're looking at the narrative and we're breaking that into narrative segments. So we're if essentially replicating what the Storyvine creative process is on a video by video basis. So you can start with this product with a Storyvine video, or you can start with, you know, a video that was created outside of the Storyvine system. But it then chapterizes that video and I can click on any one of these. It'll jump to that, you know, to that clip. I can download the clip. I can go into any one of these and edit the description of it, the in points, the out points, things like that. Um, we even generate, if you notice in the lower left here, it says Storyvine video guide prompts. Here are a set of prompting questions that are derived from the chapters that it analyzed from what this woman was saying in the video. So that if I wanted to interview another person, if I ask them this set of questions, it'll yield a video that is structured identically to the, to the one we put in here. 
So you don't even have to use Storyvine to take advantage of this. But imagine how different it is now that I can take a video and just immediately understand the world of that video. I can understand what they're talking about. Um, I can edit all these things. So now that we've got that, now that we understand the story in this in this kind of granular way, now I can start to do some really interesting things. So if I flip over here to content generation, we've got the tool set up so that it will automatically generate uh, a series of pieces of content about this video. So if I say generate all, and you'll see it start to do here. So if you're watching this thing type in the background, we're actually watching the AI write a blog post about this video. And I'll read the beginning of the blog post. The blog posts are really good. They're like, what's what's wild about this technology is it is, even when you know how it works and even, even when you know what's going on, it blows my mind every time I talk about um, I do a, a, I have a TikTok channel and we go live every night and I talk talk about it on my TikTok channel. AI is is a rolling series of Kevin McAllister moments, right? The you remember Home Alone, the that moment, <laughs> and <laughs> and I just feel like like every time I watch this thing do what it does, it blows my mind over again. Like the the quality of the writing here, you know, in the quiet expanse of Castle Pines, Colorado, Sarah's story unfolds, a narrative of resilience, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to seek change, right? And it goes on. And then it quotes her. I actually don't think there was an exact moment where I realized I needed help, Sarah reflects, right? So so it's, it's taking some basic writing stuff. Now, is this thing ready to publish? No, probably not. But you're at 80%, right? And you're at 80% like that. And there's also Instagram posts that are being generated. There's hashtags that have been generated. And there's even pull quotes. Here's interesting things that Sarah said that um, are automatically generated from the system where you can, again, edit the in and out points, you can edit the descriptions or maybe the transcription didn't quite get it quite right. But this tool for me, all of a sudden takes Storyvine from, oh, that's that tool where you could make a video that was, you know, sort of almost as good as a professional video, right? Where where you you can do video storytelling at scale and all of a sudden, now there's a reason to use Storyvine because you can create this whole world of content around it, right? There's this omni-channel output. And that that modularity of approach and sort of the, the commitment to authentic narrative now all of a sudden kind of has a reason to exist because you can communicate it in, in so many different ways. So let me just pause right there. I know I've been talking a lot and hand-waving a lot. Um, let me just check in and see if there's any questions or if anyone has any thoughts. So I, I'm going to um, replay one of the things that happened in the original call when Matt participated is said, this is really cool, right? I wonder, could you use this to capture subject matter experts answering the kinds of questions that my members, all right, um, you know, have to answer when they're trying to answer service related and or you know customer calls and you know this is in the context of you know authentic communications you know cum you know pharma mm -hmm. but we didn't hesitate in saying no it would be e it would be easy to you know imagine capturing subject matter expert responses to customer questions putting them into the video library and having it come out in a number of different formats, right? Yeah. Using the authenticity engine, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. And and in mm. fact, the, the so so the the trick of Storyvine is rather than capture a bunch of unstructured data, you pre-structure it, right? So you figure out the story framework and you just capture those modules. With AI, you could actually take unstructured video as an input so to your point kevin you could take just recordings of you know csrs have you know answering questions and then pop it in here and it would chapterize those and you know here we're calling them narrative chapters but it would actually pull out here's where they're answering you know answering you know this question here's where they're answering that question and yeah you could just download that clip it would make it very easy to do that so yeah absolutely. so one of the questions in chat from rahul um mm -hmm. i think i pronounced his name correctly is can we use this technical for technical troubleshooting or product demonstration videos? 
I think so. This is, it's relatively new technology. As I said, we've just built built this in the past month or so. Um, but but there's there's no there's no there's no reason it shouldn't be able to do any kind of video. There's a couple of nuances to it right now. One of the things that the tool doesn't have is this is a new term, Kevin. I don't know if you know this big fancy word. Kevin is really good with big fancy words. Um, <laughs> diarization uh, so diarization is when the system can actually identify multiple speakers. So it doesn't do that right now. So if you uploaded a video and it was important to capture, you know, the individuals and what they were saying, it doesn't do that right now. But I think, you know, it, it does this analysis on any video. I don't really think it matters what the input is. Any video or audio file, this can, this can chew through. Okay. Another uh, question or not question, but a comment in chat was, this feature should create a book from a movie, uh, something for readers to look uh, up to, right? Kind of a smiley face, all right? Um, well, I, yeah, I listen. I think that I think that we're entering an era where any any kind of media is going to be relatively trivial to translate to some other piece of me media right and and so we can go from long form to short form we can go from short form to long form we can we can go from yeah a visual narrative to book to workshop um and and i you know i think from a customer service standpoint that that is long term a superpower and short term an abject nightmare <laughs> because how do you deal with all this possibility um you, you know what what i encourage people that i'm teaching about ai to do is is just play and experiment and play and mm -hmm. experiment and play and experiment and try to solve problems and this early in the industry i i would i i've i've uh i've compared 2023 to 1995 in terms of sort of where we are in the trajectory of the industry. We are so early in generative AI, even though AI has been around for decades, I would argue that November 30th, 2022, the launch of ChatGPT is the beginning of the generative AI era where the rest of us get access to these tools. They are, the tools right now are raw. And they're and they're all disparate, and you kind of have to duct tape them together to get things to work. Which is this is the perfect time to experiment, um, and it's the perfect time to play and sort of figure out. Like I, I feel like we're all right now in a dark room, sort of figuring out where the furniture is and where the walls are. Except people keep moving the furniture, and the walls keep getting wider. And right. so, so just experiment right now, and don't put so much pressure on yourself to have to solve it or get it exactly right, because by the time you solve it and get it exactly right, the tech will have moved on. So right now is the perfect time to experiment with this stuff, which Hold is, on. that's ultimately what this tool is, is I an mean, experiment. We have big uh, decisions being made right now. Kyle, uh, unpack for, for our audience before you go on to the next demo, the, the recent Sora uh, decision that was taken in Atlanta. Yeah. So. If you if you didn't hear, um, it's it's being talked about a lot on social media right now. OpenAI announced it's not released yet. They announced a new video text to video model called Sora S O R A. There are a couple of significant things about it. One of them is it's it's not really about video. It it's actually the the reason it does video so good is that it it in some ways understands and simulates the real world and basically understands the physics of the video it's producing, which is just mind boggling because it, it means that video is sort of the um, most simple output that a system like that can produce. So, but anyway, so that's that. Um, three days ago, four days ago, Tyler Perry announced that he's canceling an $800 million studio expansion to his um, his film campus in Atlanta, Georgia, or outside of Atlanta, um, after seeing Sora. So he saw that this, this video creation tool was capable enough that he canceled an $800 million studio expansion because what he basically said was, I don't need to go on set to, to create um, that kind of content anymore, you know, big, big, 
um, kind of visual things. I don't need a studio to do that. I can do that from my desk. So for me, that was the first major domino to fall that is like it's a significant harbinger it here's here's what's funny it's really easy right now to say oh it's going to ruin the film industry it's going to ruin this or it's going to steal people's jobs what i see it as is it's going to change everything <laughs> now so jobs will change i don't think jobs you know get eaten i think jobs change that one to me feels like a harbinger that that he recognized that, oh, by the time I build this studio two years from now, this technology will have gotten to the point that any imperfections in it right now have been smoothed over, right? And, and it, it's just, it doesn't make economic sense to do it. Does that mean he's not going to make movies? No, he's just going to use different tools and different approaches. Sure. And one more question, and then we move forward. Bar Babar Gaur asks, can the tool, this version or one coming up, can it be used as a learning management system? And yeah, so, I think you can load assets into an LMS, but what would your answer be, Kyle? Well, this would this would not be a learning management system. I'll, I'll actually call an audible here and show you something that that's mind blowing. <laughs> that, that I don't. I, I'm actually going to do it because it, it's not related to the story by, but that's cool. I'm going to show you something. Sure. Um, this area to the right where, you know, it says content here and it's a blog post, Instagram post, hashtags and quotes. This is just one set of output puts it could do. I could also create a set of outputs that is like content analysis. Like what are the kinds of words that were used in here? Did this woman say anything that might flag a regulatory red flag? So, so yeah, you could absolutely take an input like this and generate learning content on the outside that you would put into an LMS. This wouldn't be the LMS, but you could certainly generate content for it. Uh, I'm gonna show you something here that... There's our sales manager. Um, you can follow along on this one if you want. Go to explorer, explorer.globe.engineer. This, so this is the LMS thing, so let's see. Um, I want to learn about the early days of the World Wide Web. Yeah, thanks for the gift yesterday, Kyle. This is cool. Yeah. So what this is doing, I, like, again, this is just this. This one was a Kevin McAllister moment for me yesterday, right? Just like. So if you look down the left-hand side here, I want to learn about the early days of the World Wide Web. Here's basically, there's your curriculum, right? ARPANET, Tim Berners-Lee, Mosaic Browser, um, web design, uh, search engines, web design, online communities, e-commerce. And then it goes out and it automatically populates this outline with screenshots from websites. And all of these connect you directly to a website that's got you know, that image on it. And here's the story. Um, it, it, it's just, it's just mind boggling. And then each one of these that they, they, I think they had to, all these little question marks are AI generated descriptions of that little piece of the puzzle. Um, and I think they, they made this a manual process now, because if you, if you look at the the top here, it basically said too many people are using this and we can't keep up with the traffic. Well, so put your email address in here and we'll let you know when we fix it. Well, it's uh, not pre-generating them. It's generating them when you ask for it. So it doesn't right. use yeah, so it doesn't show up the server. But, but I mean, it's like, you know, um, I want to learn to juggle. And as someone who taught myself to juggle when I was in high school, um, I had to go to libraries and I had to do all sorts of stuff like this just immediately goes into, I don't know why it, it did it so short. It did longer yesterday, but like it immediately goes into, here's the cascade pattern, right? This took me weeks to find a book that had that diagram in it to figure out how to do it. And it's just bang instantly there. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Next magic trick. Next magic trick. Okay. Moving on. Kyle's, Kyle's tech meets the definition of what Asimov said, that it's sufficiently advanced that it appears to be magical. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, it's it's funny. In, in my community, there's a guy in the community named Pate. He works at Google. 
And every time I say this stuff is is magic, he's like, no, no, it's it's math. And then someone in the community goes, it's math magical. So it's kind of like it's out of magic, right? Um, but but it, it really is. I mean, here's what seems magical about it. Historically, if you wanted to generate some work, you had to put in a lot of time and effort, and then you would get out some amount of work, right? And if you're really talented, you put in this amount of effort and you get out this amount of work. Or, or if you're super talented, you put in this amount of effort and you get out this amount of work, right? You know, you're, you're super good, either quality or quantity, whatever. AI flips that. And you put in a minimal amount of input and you get out maximum amount of work and maximum amount of quality. And a lot of times you put in this little bit of effort and what you get out is something that is a skill that you actually don't have. Like I can't draw for crap. I have ADD. I can't code. Well, I can code now and I can draw now. <laughs> like I put in this much effort and I get out this kind of art and this kind of program. It 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 is like I don't know that we as as just humans have a way to process that. And one of the things I've noticed in my communities is that that relationship between um not putting in as much time and getting this much value out. What I'm noticing is a lot of people in, in the community are apologizing for that. Well, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I really didn't do this, or this probably isn't all that valuable. If it's valuable, it's valuable. It doesn't matter what the input was. And that's that's a really interesting thing that I think we're all gonna be grappling with. So yeah, I, I think this stuff is absolutely magic. Okay, so I showed you before that Storyvine is this kind of modular <clears throat> um, system to, to capture narrative. Well, what can we do with those modules? Well, one of the things you can do now, if you haven't seen this, this is my point. Like this is absolutely um, sci-fi kind of stuff. So here's Ellen. My greatest source of support living with rheumatoid arthritis has been um, speaking with other people about what they've gone through, uh, reading a lot about the effects of rheumatoid arthritis. And what if we wanted to take this story and enter the Spanish market. Mi mayor fuente de apoyo viviendo con artritis reumatoide ha sido hablar con otras personas sobre lo que han pasado, leer mucho sobre los efectos de la artritis reumatoide. Now, I don't know if the if the Zoom call if it's stuttery or anything, but if if you couldn't see it, her lips are actually resynced to to match the new words. It's her voice, right? So this is her image, her position, her intonation, her voice, her lips saying those words in Spanish. Because our system has these modules as discrete little, little segments, we can translate those raw clips into Spanish. I can then also take the text from the lower third graphics of the video that was produced, and I can tra translate those into Spanish too. So I can go from a fully native English video to a fully native Spanish video, essentially, you know, in, in a few minutes. Hola, mi nombre es Ellen. Soy de Bellevue, Washington, y me diagnosticaron artritis reumatoide hace unos 22 años. Estoy más apasionado en mi vida por mi familia. Tengo una... Right, so fully Spanish lower thirds, right? Amazing. I can now take this Spanish video, I can put that into the authenticity engine and now create a whole world of content around this video in Spanish, right? So all of a sudden, Storyvine went from being like a tool that could create this video or these 10 videos to a tool that can not only create that video, but can bring it to life in all these different ways for all these different audiences. I can do that now for 27 languages. So here's... Namaste, my name is Ellen. I am Bellevue, Washington. I was a rheumatoid arthritis for 22 years old. Here she is speaking Japanese. Konnichiwa, I am Eren. I was born in Bellevue for 22 years old. I was born in Kanchariu. I was born in my life. So, you know, I just I just think about this from, you know, if I'm the, the CEO of a multinational corporation, right, I can get my, my I, I could just record in this simple little fashion and just instantly um, share that. 
one of the one of the first and most obvious questions from you should be, yeah, but is it is it any good, Kyle? Um, the answer is yes. The, the answer is it's surprisingly good. There are weird nuances, like apparently the Hindi is kind of a flowery version of Hindi that you know has 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 got a particular thing. But I did a I did a video of myself speaking Mandarin, and I it might not be obvious. I don't speak Mandarin. Um, so, so I said to my TikTok community, I said, Hey, can anyone validate? Like, is this any good? And this guy made a TikTok video in response. He has an adopted son that speaks, um, Mandarin, native Mandarin. And so he sends me this video and the video is, is the, the guy going, well, what did you think of Kyle? And he goes, Kyle's Mandarin is very good. And then, he, and then the guy goes, well, it's AI. And he goes, yeah, Kyle was talking about AI. And he goes, no, it was AI. And he goes, yeah, he was talking about AI. He goes, no, it was AI that did, did the translation. And he, and he goes, oh, it was AI. Like he didn't know I didn't speak it, right? Um, so, so again, this is three years ago translations were were bad unreliable not good to all of a sudden overnight not only is it translating it it's resynthesizing the video so that the person doing the talking is actually doing the talking without the sort of you know uh video dubbing you know yeah. thing we make fun of alex in chat is is validating that the spanish sounds authentic oh good awesome so yeah. you're getting more validation here Kyle. Awesome. Uh, what one of the things that I asked Kyle about was, hey, I've got a global announcement coming up. All right. And what I want to do is take the executive and, you know, do, you know, the single message, right, in native tongue, and then blow it out in all these other languages for different markets. He yep. said, yeah, no problem, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Okay, so let me let me run forward. So I want to show you one other thing, which is which is personas. Um, yep. And again, as as an extension of of what Storyvine's done done for you know more than a decade, um, what else can we do? And and so so some of the stuff I'm about to show you is is wild, but but. The, there's a way we. There's a way we're going to have to navigate this technology into our workflow. So about a year ago, I took I took um, a persona mm -hmm. and I created a photorealistic image of someone and I made a Storyvine video. So it looked like a person. It sounded like a person. It was synthesized. It was a little janky and weird. But I was really excited about it because of, of what was possible, right? I could take someone who didn't exist and I could have them tell a story by story and make a make a video. And so I showed it to our staff and one person almost quit. And one and two people were absolutely freaked out. And everyone was like, don't show that to anyone. <laughs> um, because we, we, the speed of the speed of technological innovation here is really quick. So one of the things I wanted to do was, could I take that basic technology and deliver it in a way that uses some creative conventions, not to have it be so so weird and freaky? And so that's that's what I'm going to show you here. So one of the things that our clients will sometimes face, especially if they're like a rare disease kind of kind of uh, product, where they might not know their patients or patients are hard to find, is they they might not be able to capture video stories, or maybe someone can't be on video. Maybe they have an audio recording of someone, or maybe they just have a text story of someone. Can we bring those to life in video as well? And the answer, of course, is yes, or I wouldn't ask the question. Um, but what I did here for this example is I took a photograph of Ellen and I, I stylized it. I turned it into a stylized, like a charcoal drawing. And then I took a recording of her audio and created this. My greatest source of support living with rheumatoid arthritis has been um, speaking with other people about what they've gone through, uh, reading a lot about the effects of rheumatoid arthritis. And I thought, well, could we do the same thing with a written story? And so I took um, the recording of Ellen and I created a model of her voice. And then I just took a text story and a similar sort of drawing, a similar sort of approach to the animation. And I created this. Hi, I'm Ellen. 
Despite living with rheumatoid arthritis, I've discovered a passion for water skiing and interpretive dance, which bring joy and a sense of freedom to my life. I was the copywriter. I came up with water skiing and interpretive dance. It makes me very happy. It makes me smile every time. <laughs> okay, so so you can take snippets of stories or snippets of content and, and bring those to life in this way. And again, I chose to do them as drawings because I the technology is not at the point yet where it doesn't seem weird when it's photo photorealistic. It just seems a little off. The translation stuff is okay. And I don't know if you noticed this, but I created a labeling system. So the translation at the bottom of it for the first five seconds says AI translation is AI generated. So the convention here is let's do something that that sort of separates it from reality a step, you know, to 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 kind of bridge that gap. The th final thing I'm going to show you here is is fully bringing personas to life. So we have the capability now to be able to generate a persona framework then populate that framework. So persona framework might be, you know, what's the person's socioeconomic background? What's their education background? Where do they work? You know, how many kids do they have? What's their age? All that sort of stuff. I can then generate a series of personas, 12 different people that, that you know, fill out that framework and then have each of those people answer a set of story buying questions and essentially authentically tell their story based on the story vine prompts and based on their background. What's uncanny is how close it is to the kinds of stories we get from real human beings. But I can then take that story that was told and use similar technology to bring those stories to life as well. So here's George. Hi, I'm George Miller. My life's always been about simple pleasures, cooking my catch of the day and enjoying the quiet of the country. There's nothing like the peace of fishing at dawn or the aroma of a home-cooked meal. So there's George. Here's George's doctor. Hello, I'm Dr. Emily Park. As an endocrinologist specializing in diabetes, my approach goes beyond traditional treatment. I'm deeply committed to empowering my patients, integrating medical care with lifestyle changes. So that's that's personas. And, you know, the, the use cases for this are kind of endless, right? You could bring qualitative research to life. You could, if you, you know, if you're trying to tell a marketing story, but you just don't have the budget, there's a different way to, to approach it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think, you know, for me, there's the technology that makes it possible and then there's how you're using it and, and you know, how you're focusing it, right? You know, what is the purpose of using the technology? So rather than starting with, what can I do with AI? It's more like, how can I tell stories authentically, you know, that accomplish this goal? and then go back and figure out how to do that. So that's that's what's taken me the better part of a year to integrate is like, I knew these tools a year ago. It took me a year to think about how to incorporate them into Storyvine without it just being like, you know, technology slapped onto the butt of, mm -hmm. of, of the offering. So oh, with that, we were trying to educate. To open it up. Yeah, we're gonna open to some questions. Um, Kyle, while we were, the intention here is to, is to you know kind of open you to possibility. Um, we did get some questions related to how does Storyvine actually go to market? You know what uh, you know is you know do you, you produce this for people? Do you license the technology? You know what what is it you know yeah what is it that you actually do to deliver it to the to the marketplace? So yeah. since we got the question, we'll answer. Yeah, sure. Storyvine one point we'll call it. Um, is uh, it's an annual subscription. It includes two templates. So the template again is that re story recipe plus the look and feel, and you can do unlimited videos within that. Um, and we've got different tiers. Healthcare has got all sorts of privacy and regulatory protections. We've got sort of a, a, a middle tier that's for you know large corporations. And then we kind of have a nonprofit tier that's semi-customizable. Um, so that's that. With the AI tools, um, they're in varying degrees of, of development. The authenticity engine right now we're selling as, as an upsell to, to a Storybind subscription. We're thinking about potentially selling that as a standalone. Um, and and you know, we're, we're figuring out what that looks like right now. So the AI stuff, I'm much less clear on in terms of how we go mm -hmm. to market with it. But frankly, one of the reasons I'm excited to be on this call is to just get your ideas about 
where you see the value, you know, of the things I showed, like what was exciting, how would you use it, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm I'm really excited to hear any of Matt, that. Matt, how do you normally call on people that uh, I, I'd ask for guidance, right, versus the way that I normally do it? How do you get people to join the call? Uh, so people can come off mute if they want to ask questions or continue to type them in the uh, in in the chat. And I think just you know this is where when I saw this like the possibilities in my mind exploded because we've been talking about in yeah. you know kind of the knowledge management communities. You're sitting in a CRM. You've captured a whole bunch of stuff. You've created a knowledge base. You know our methodology helps you maintain that knowledge base, keep it up to date based on demand, based on what's current, right? Instead of I wrote a book and six months later, it's completely outdated because our technology as a company has changed so quick. The end, so how do you do translation? And then this, always looking for these new formats to deliver information because, you know, shorter and shorter pieces of information are being consumed. How do we get in in all the different channels, all the different ways people want to interact with us and our, and our knowledge, having like an avatar that you could you know, hey, here's knowledge that we captured and we can easily create 20, 30 second videos or something that are very targeted and specific and findable to me was something that our members are talking about as they go down these journeys. So that was where I was like, wow. I mean, the applications here for this type of technology are, are pretty broad. Yeah, I mean, Kyle, you can tell them about what we're actually doing in Colab if you want to. Yeah, that that I'm really excited about. I also want to, I just noticed my co-founder Monique Elwell, Elwell is here. Hi, Monique. <laughs> Hello, I'm trying furiously to answer all the questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like almost not even paying attention. Nice to work. Okay, great. <laughs> so to, to understand Monique and my relationship, so we co-founded Storyvine in May of 2012. Um, as, as we describe it, I'm the hand wavy guy. She's the one that keeps the trains running on time. So... <laughs> She's off in the corner keeping the train running on time. Sure. Anyway, good to see you. Um, yeah, the, the thing that we're doing in 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 Colab right now. So um back in November, OpenAI announced or, or released a new version of Chat GPT 4 that included this thing called GPTs, which are personalized, customized versions of Chat GPT. They are shockingly easy to make like shockingly like you know they talk about zapier being low code no code gpts are apps like you literally say i want a gpt that does this and it makes it for you it's remarkable but you can fancy them up and one of the things that you can do with a gpt is you can upload a knowledge base and so as, as we were thinking about content evolution which is a federation of different companies most of the companies led by these remarkable people who've got these amazing careers we were like, what do we do for content evolution? Well, we could talk about the companies and we could talk about the services and talk about the this and talk about the that. And we're like, well, wait a minute. We've got all these remarkable people. Why don't we take the books that they wrote and the this and the that? And then we, what we realized was, well, wait a minute. Some of those books might be 30 years old and that might not be what they're thinking now. Mm -hmm. Could we do something that represents kind of the brilliance and wisdom of, of who content evolution is? in a much more kind of real-time relevant way. So what we did was we developed a structured, it was 20 questions, right? Like we did a 20 questions exercise and we came up with an interview that we're gonna interview every person within Content Evolution. And then we're taking, we're video recording those interviews. We're taking the transcript of that and we're using that as the knowledge source for the GPT. So every person within Content Evolution is gonna have a digital twin that their knowledge is this, the, this set of questions that they answered. Some of those are personal, some of those are professional, some of those are historical, some of those are forward-looking. And so you can go in and have an interaction with them. And then ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll those all together into a master GPT um, that allows you to, to interact with content evolution virtually. And if you've played with GPTs, one of the, one of the hacks with them is you can put calls to action into the instructions. So someone can be interacting with the virtual Kevin Clark. And at some point, Ke you know, Kev virtual Kevin Clark says, hey, if you're enjoying <laughs> this conversation and you want to reach out and connect with, you know, Kevin directly, you know, here's his Calendly link or something like that. So that I'm, that I'm really excited about because it's, it's, it's a very simple approach, but the, 
the the impact is profound and and just easy to replicate across. I mean, people. you can imagine, Matt. You know, for you know the, the way that you create you know knowledge management today, that a lot of that came from specific subject matter experts and or questions that have come in from the outside world and so on and so forth. Um, you could use the same met methodology to capture subject matter expert yep. points of view, create separate GPTs for mm. every one of them. And like Kyle said, roll them back up into a you know master uh, or you know larger set you know GPT that would allow you to navigate to you know the right GPT for answering your question. Right, that that is imminently possible based on what we're experiencing right now, and wow. that seems like it's right up your lane. Yeah. I see, uh, Mark, you have your hand raised. If you want to. I do. Uh, a, a new uh, a thought. I've been with this group for a while, and and um, it's wonderful. My issue, and this is hopefully other people have this, is taking a new idea, a very different idea into the world, and and that that many people object to from many points of view, and and I can see having these these charcoals, these personas. Uh, coming out and and representing all the objections that yeah. you hear from you hear from this from parents you hear this from kids you hear from this from administrators and just each one addresses one of those so I'd love to go in that direction yeah yeah no it's it's a great way to do it I wrote an article on on LinkedIn so people kept asking me about Biden's executive order on AI and I kept thinking like well people are going to have different opinions and I thought hey what if I did that I went to ChatGPT and said you know, what are all the different personas who might have an opinion on the executive order? And it came up with, I came up with five. And then I said, what am I missing? And it came up with three more. <laughs> and, and then I had each one of those personas give their opinion on the, on, on the executive order by, you know, uploading it as source. Um, and it, it was remarkable what it did. And it, it really opened my eyes as to, oh yeah, that's how they would look at it. And that's like, it gave me a more nuanced understanding of it, which I thought was that was pretty powerful. It's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do think it's. You a... wanted to, you know, handle like stand-ups constantly have you know little snippets of how do you handle a heckler, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? <laughs> there are people who call in, right, that are you know not nice to customer service people, right? And so this, it'd be better to do it with with a GPT representation, right, first, mm -hmm. and and it do the interaction and in practice before you have to do it with a real person. Yeah, and if you don't know it, um, the um, how hang on, I couldn't I couldn't think of something to say. So what I'm <laughs> showing, if you if you don't know it, the Chat GPT app, yeah, the official app from Chat GPT, you can put into conversation mode, so you could create a GPT which is a curmudgeonly angry customer and have customer service people mm -hmm. actually have an interaction. How would I deal with a cranky customer who's not happy with our service? It's uh, thinking. <laughs> Come on, ChatGPT. You can See, this is why you don't do live demos. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. There's too you many people playing with it right selling. now. Yeah, danger selling, exactly. <laughs> I'll try one more time. <laughs> How do I deal with a cranky customer? Dealing with a cranky customer requires patience, empathy, and a strategic approach. Here's a concise guide to navigate this situation. Right. So anyway... But right. if you had a custom trained GPT that that gave particular, you know, resistances or, you know, complaints or something like that, that could be used as training. So and, and again, this this stuff's moving so fast. So the ability to interact with that persona is probably less than a year away where you're actually having a conversation face to face with a persona. Yeah. So we're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, fantastic 
discussion and kind of opening up, I think some of the things that I saw, you know, a month ago to, you know, the, the audience of the consortium here is, is fantastic. Um, if they want to get in touch with the two of you, is there a best way that they, we should have the audience do that? We will be posting a blog on our site, serviceinnovation.org with an edited version of the video. And, uh, you know, we can include links to your LinkedIn pages or mm -hmm. anything else. So if you want to let Actually, me know that, I can get those connected. Um, the easiest way is hello at storyvine.com. Easy to remember, comes to us. So Okay, perfect. Yeah. I put a uh, email link in and, you know, you can look at just contentevolution.net. It has a way to, you know, contact us. As I said, you know, Storyvine is a valued member of Content Evolution, and you know, Kyle has been a uh, really great mm -hmm. leader for our uh, collab, right? For the Content Evolution collab, and you know, helping us harness generative AI. I would just, you know, uh, conclude. I don't know what Kyle would say, but you should just go in and do something, right? You know, don't wait for you know, things to get perfect or to mm. wait for your IT department to help you. All these tools are coming up. Just get into it, be messy and and play with it. It will inspire you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes time to do something that's mission critical yep. to then ask the right questions and to form the right uh, narrative about here's what I'd like to see happen you know, in our enterprise, in our organization, in our, in our business. Um, because the longer you wait, um, you know, the people who are experts right now are months old. They yeah, are not they, years old, right? They, they, and they're, so they're, you might as well become an expert now. Kyle, yeah. what would you recommend? I, well, just that, that's it. Play, play, play. Um, I, I would say this, if you, A, if you haven't tried ChatGPT at all, get there now, chat.openai.com. Just go there now, like right now, while I'm talking, chat.openai.com. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, we have uh, lots of examples of people writing sonnets about knowledge-centered yeah. success and all these other things. Exactly, and just, right. go, just go start doing that. Then I would say this, the 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT+, I personally think is a requirement. You should understand what is possible with ChatGPT4 right now. It's it's insane. And Sam Altman has described ChatGPT4 as a preview. And he says, progress here is not linear. What's coming with AI is, is just going to be bonkers. So if you can, do anything you can to understand what the capability is now, because 2024 is going to get really weird. I'm one of the sayings I'm kicking around right now is <laughs> 2023, the last normal year, because um, things are about to get weird. And so be up to speed on what's happening today. Just start with ChatGPT. That's it. You don't need more than that. Um, get good at it. Just play with it. Start with sonnets. Have your Kevin McAllister moment or 10. <laughs> and then uh, and then when the good stuff starts coming, you'll be ready for it. You know what? The, uh, the Kevin McAllister thing, does not have to be the Edvard Munch, the scream, right? <laughs> exactly. Which is a similar gesture. It does not have to be the scream, guys, right? Yeah. You can just have that, oh, this is cool moment, all right? And that's what we're that's what we're encouraging you to, you to do. Uh, it's yeah. a uh, um, it's it's all happening kind of fast. Mm -hmm. So More than kind of fast. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that the, we've been. I don't know. I mean. Internet came really fast in the time that it occurred. This is happening right at, at a faster pace. Um, you don't have to get left behind. Well, and dramatically faster. So the World Wide Web took six years to get to 100 million users. ChatGPT took six weeks. Right. I'm We're, just saying that it's crazy. Don't get left behind. Augment yourself today. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you thank you very much kevin kyle this thank is fantastic you. everybody who registered will get a uh a follow-up email with a link to the blog post where the video will be and everything else so look for Pat, that over the next couple days us. thank you have a great day everyone everybody thank you very much